Please stand for the reading of God's holy word. Only three verses tonight. St. John 13, 33. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you, my, my, my. And the disciples are saying, Oh, my, what are you talking about now? A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. In other words, stop being competitive. Stop trying to be the greatest. Stop... Uh, Comparing yourselves among yourselves and just love one another. Amen, somebody. By this shall all men know that ye are my focus. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Holy Father God in heaven, we know that you're on your throne tonight, that you uh, never sleep nor slumber, and we know that your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, is at your right hand, and Lord God in heaven, we thank you for the redemption story. And we pray that you'd forgive us and cleanse us of our sins, our failures and faults, and all unrighteousness uh, in word, thought, and deed, and fill us afresh and anew with the fullness and the power, the unction and the anointing uh, of your Holy Spirit to preach your holy word once again, to preach the gospel. And we thank you for the souls that have been saved. We pray that millions more would hear and that uh, millions would come to know your Savior. We pray specifically for over three million people to be saved through this ministry alone, and millions more saved through other ministries. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and that you would rebuke and bind the devil. Pray. Uh, Holy Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, please rebuke and bind the devil, his demons, and his host from your people as they serve you and rebuke and bind the satanic demonic spirit of Judas betrayal and sabotage uh, from this place and we pray that those who do know you as Savior would pray without ceasing while I'm preaching so that uh, those who don't know you as Savior their eyes would be open and that they would understand the gospel and run to Jesus for it is in his name we pray and for his sake, amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Joshua Harris Joshua Harris said the world takes us to a silver screen on which flickering images of passion and romance play and as we watch the world says this is love God takes us to the foot of a tree to the old rugged cross on which a naked and bloody man hangs and says, no, no, this is love. Amen, somebody. 
Beloved, the most important thing that Jesus wanted his disciples to take away from the events of this night was love. God's agape, unconditional love. The love that he had demonstrated to his disciples, even to the traitor, the love that he and God the Father were showing to the world and the love that they ought to show, uh, that these disciples ought to show to one another, this God kind of love, this agape love, this unconditional love that only God can produce. For God is love. Amen, somebody. Being a fiery evangelist, dear Moody preached more on judgment, preached on hell, preached uh, heaven was sweet, hell is hot, and uh, one day he was uh, touched by God's hand, so to speak. God spoke to him and changed his heart. He continued to preach, hell was hot and heaven was sweet. He continued to preach against sin, but God had touched his heart in such a way Reminding him that God is love. And that he went to the church. And maybe some of these lights are still in the church. I don't know. But he put God as love. Uh, on all of the lights. And it changed him. And it changed his preaching somewhat. Anyway to that end. Jesus leaves them with a new commandment that ye love one another. As part of his last words, Jesus wanted to emphasize to these, his disciples, what my dad used to say when he was living, love is what it is. That was his saying, love is what it is, became the motto of the church that he pastored. Love is what it is. Up until chapter 12 in John's gospel, the world, the world, uh, or rather the word, uh, up until chapter 12 in John's gospel, the word love has appeared only 12 times. From this chapter onward, the word appears 44 times. The new commandment of love is very important in Jesus' final words and actions. Now, the newness of this commandment does not mean that it had never been given before, because God has always been about love, for the Bible says God is love. Amen, somebody. And uh, you may not admit it, but you have experienced God's love if you have lived just a little bit in your life. Rather, the word new emphasizes freshness. It is as if the idea of love is getting, if you will, a makeover in the light of what Jesus has done and is doing. People were expected to love one another in the Old Testament. But now Jesus says to his disciples, you ought to love one another as I have loved you. And not only that, you need to love other people that you don't even know. Not just your little group, not just your family but people that you don't even know, your neighbors, 
Jesus taught them this. He had loved them sacrificially and selflessly, as the Bible says, to the very end, to the uttermost. That is not something that people normally do considering our wicked, selfish, sinful nature. Amen, somebody. Uh, most of us have no problem loving our selfish selves. But we have a serious problem choosing to love other people and letting God love others through us. Normally, we love people based on whether we like them, whether or not they're part of our little group, our little clique, part of our race, part of our family, or if they love us or do certain things for us. And oftentimes, we still don't love them as we should with God is agape, unconditional love. And by the way, there's no other love. But God's agape, unconditional love. That's real love. But the new commandment demanded that the disciples love as Jesus loved. They were to love the traitors among them as Jesus had loved Judas. the faithless among them as Jesus had loved Thomas, the reckless among them as Jesus had loved Peter, knowing that he would deny him three times. Jesus loved his disciples despite their flaws, their sins, and their inconsistencies. Amen, somebody. And you will not make it in life. Your family will not stay together. Your business will not work. Your church will not uh, grow and be what it should be if you don't learn how to love people in spite of their sins, their flaws, their failures, and their inconsistencies and their craziness. Because we have some Christian brothers and sisters today who are doing some crazy things. I know of a brother who did something crazy yesterday, but you know what? I still love him. I'm not saying any names. Just let your mind wander. Now, he is asking the disciples, beloved, to do the same toward each other, to love one another with that God. Agape, unconditional love. It's a beautiful thing. Letting God love people through you by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is an amazing thing. Uh, in the, the commentary that they edited together, Dr. Walvert and Dr. Zuck uh, said, the 11 disciples would survive in Jesus' absence by obeying his example of love, did they not love each other in the upper room? When they prayed down and prayed for, uh, prayed together before the Holy Spirit came down upon them? The command is new in that it is a special love for other believers based on the sacrificial love of Jesus. Christians love and support for one another enable them to survive in a hostile and wicked world. Amen, somebody. As Jesus was the embodiment of God's love, so now each disciple should embody Christ's love towards one another. How about it, dear Christian friend, tonight? Are you loving as you should? The way that Christians love each other or should love each other is a sign to the world of the power of Christ. It's a beautiful thing when black Christian folk 
love white Christian folk and white Christian folk love black Christian folk and they can get together and say it like they mean it all lives matter to God and we're going to work to solve these issues together by presenting the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and loving on people no matter how hateful they might be amen somebody you saw law you saw this love exercise when a white man went into a black church on a Wednesday night and killed the people in Bible study and prayer meeting and how that church and the Christians in that city responded both black and white you saw love and I guarantee you, you saw some love in Texas when they killed those five police officers Texas is not the place to be doing stuff like that. Uh, Christians started praying. Christians, Christians started uh, preaching and teaching and gathering people together. The love of Christ. Restrained what could have been a catastrophe. Jesus said, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Amen, somebody. Amen. The early church father Tertullian said, The pagans of his day, uh, after observing Christian behavior, remarked, See how they love one another. They love one another. And by the way, you can't fake this. And the lost people know you can't fake it. As Christians, we ought to examine ourselves and see if we truly have God's love for all our brothers and sisters in Christ. And one of the reasons why America is in the mess uh, that it is in today is because the so-called white church and the so-called black church and the so-called brown church has not shown the world how to love one another. Beloved, do we love selflessly? Do we love sacrificially as Christ loved? Or do we still love by the world's sinful standards of reciprocity, loving those who love us and please us, and then cutting off that love when they don't do what we want them to do that's not truly God's love Jesus said if you love them which love you what good is that sinners also love those that love them if you have not yet trusted Jesus Christ dear friend as your Savior look to the love of Christ spoken of in the Gospels. Jesus loves you just as he loved his disciples selflessly and sacrificially. His dying for you was the greatest demonstration of love that the world had ever seen. Make this simple hymn your prayer to Jesus today. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Jesus, take this heart of mine, make it pure and holy thine. Thou hast bled and died for me. I will live henceforth for thee. Amen, somebody. Amen. Trust Jesus Christ as your Savior tonight. Understand and acknowledge that you are a sinner like the rest of us. You have sinned against God, whether you understand that fully or not. I'm telling you the truth, and I believe you know that to be true. You're not perfect. Have you ever lied to somebody? Have you ever stolen somebody's cheesecake out of the refrigerator and then blamed it on your children? Have you ever uh, stolen somebody's honey? 
out of the cabinet and took you a few scoops and then lied and said you didn't do it? Have you ever swiped a whole jar of peanut butter, uh, leaving your little siblings uh, hungry and crying? Have you ever stolen a cookie out of the cookie jar? There were 10 cookies and now there's two left. Have you ever had an evil thought? You lusted at the beautiful woman or a handsome man. You looked at pornography and did evil things. You get drunk as often as you can, trying to escape the pain of life. You are a sinner and I am a sinner. We all have done wrong in our lives. Nobody is better than anybody. From the Pope on down, from Billy Graham on down, we are all guilty. And so therefore we need a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ, the only Holy One, the only perfect one, who died on the cross for our sins. Amen, somebody. And he said in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You don't have to pay for your sins by going to hell. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. He is the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. All of our sins have been paid for. Every last one of them. Past, present, and future. Remember now, you were in the future when he died on the cross for your sins. So all of your sins were future. Pray and ask him to save your soul tonight. For Romans 10.9 makes it very, very clear. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Pray and ask him to save you tonight with me. Repeat after me phrase by phrase. Somebody help me to pray this prayer some 36 years ago when I believed on Christ. I'm willing to help you because you've never done it before. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. And God will save your soul tonight. Yes, it is just that easy and that simple. Let's pray. Holy Father God in heaven, I pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I realize that I am a sinner. I acknowledge that I have sinned against you and that I have broken your laws. There's no way that I can fully understand how much I have offended you. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins, my failures and my faults. As I now believe the best way that I know how that Jesus Christ, your Holy Son, died on the cross for my sins, was buried and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and to follow you in a new life and to be what you would have me to be until I see you face to face. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart tonight that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again, uh, and you prayed that prayer with me, you meant it from your heart and with your heart, allow me to say to you congratulations on trusting Christ as Savior. According to the Word of God, you are now saved, you are now born again. You're a child of God and you're on your way to heaven. Heaven is glad and Satan in hell is mad. And uh, for more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. 
Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture.